Okay, so we did the safety check before. Now what do we do? Now we do the floors. Okay, so we did the safety check. Now we go top to bottom, left to right. ATOP Jets is a basically a career experience. You know, think about this. Would you ever buy a car without driving it around the clock? You know? So we'd like to say this is test driving your career dreams. There's a 36 Lima Mike Austin clearance, clear to Grand Prairie, Golf Papa Mike Airport via Syntex 6 departure. Waco transition for the Dodge 5 arrival, climb maintain 4,000, expect 7,000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 119.0, squawk 2765. The ATOPS jet course is, there, there is no easier way to get a little taste of what it is like to be an airline pilot, to see if you truly like it. For most people, it, it really is a path that is very intriguing and very interesting. It's, um, as Wayne says, there's no better way to get paid and not really have to work. You know, if your definition of work is sit at a desk and work, airline life is not that. Doing this course is a good introduction to that. Today we're kind of thinking back on our experience that we just had at the ATOP Jet course. This is my second time visiting ATOP Jets and receiving this training program from uh, Captain Wayne Phillips, uh, as we call him, Uncle Wayne. This is a course that allows mere mortal aviators and sometimes not even pilots the opportunity to get some basic training and some flight time in a 737 Class D simulator. Let's go to RTO for all the brakes. That flaps one set. Okay, do the uh, master caution recall. Looks to me like you have an airplane. 4,000 feet. Okay. And we're going to be on a heading of approximately 176 for takeoff. So what exactly is the ATOP jet course? It's actually got a really simple answer. It's a way for you to get a taste of what airline training would be like before you go and spend tens of thousands of dollars and get yourself rolling that career path already before you've even tasted what training for a type rating would be like or training to get your ATP or get on with a 121 carrier as a pilot. So Captain Wayne Phillips or Uncle Wayne as we call him is the guy that puts all of this together. He's an incredibly phenomenal instructor. He is awesome. A really nice guy, really fun to be around. He makes the whole course fun and the best part is his motivation for this course is driven by passion he loves what he does and he loves putting together this course we did our training up in the American Airlines training facility and it consisted of a full day ground school where we learned just about every system on that airplane this is a course that most ATP pilots take weeks and weeks to go through to get this level of information. So we get a very abridged version, but it's surprisingly very complete. So we did the safety check before uh, we uh, broke for lunch. Now what do we do? Now we do the floors. Okay, so we did the safety check. Now we're gonna go top to bottom, left to right, as if you're setting up the airplane. Okay. So who exactly is this course for? Well, it's really for anybody. However, Wayne does have some minor requirements. You have to have at least a student pilot certificate and you have to have at least 15 hours of flight time in the airplane. So you at least have some understanding of how an airplane flies. So in this class, we actually had a pretty good mix of people. We had a couple of guys that just had the bare minimum requirements, the 15 hours with the student certificate. We had one guy that was about a 200 hour private pilot trying to work his way through his ratings. Ken, he's multi-engine rated about a thousand hours. And we got Ryan, who's also from Austin. He professionally flies helicopters and jets. So there was a good mix of people in this class. And you can take this course for a number of reasons. And he gets all types of people from those who are seriously considering an airline career all the way down to those who just kind of want to try it for fun. They just want to see what it's like to fly a 737 level D sim. So they come and sign up for this course and they get some real hands-on experience with the level D sim. Americans 456 DFW Tower. Remember 177 line up the wait. American 456 177 line up the wait. Excellent, very good. Runway. Americans 456 climb maintain 4000 runway heading runway. One seven center, you are clear for takeoff. Rick, four fifty six, climb into four thousand, we're heading clear for takeoff. Captain. All righty. Tower, America 456 with that engine failure. We'll be turning off the next thing. Uh, 
All right, very good. Hold right there, we'll get you a tug 456. Okay, good job, good job. Took a little bit of time, but we got it. Notice As we were going halfway down the runway, one of my engines failed. Now, I was thinking we're gonna get some big red alarm bells and sirens and all this other things, but in Bowen's infinite wisdom, they don't want to distract the pilot during a engine failure, so it's completely silent. My first clue was the runway was over there, my nose is pointing that way. But as the airplane started drifting off the center line, you know, put the rudder in, cut the power, brought it to its to a stop. And one thing you can do in a simulator you don't do in a real plane is hit the reset button and away we go and start flying again. American 456, turn right. Right turn, heading of uh, 360, maintain 4000. Right turn, 360, maintain 4000. Right, 456. Four five six is smooth so far. I have a feeling that might be changing though. You're set up three six zero. You get into the simulator and you actually buckle into the seat because the thing is gonna move. Now I only went into the simulator with Ken in the left seat since I was kind of his camera guy on this trip. And Wayne just has this way of when he gets bored, he's he's gonna mess with you because he's basically got the magic wand back there at his little station. He can change whatever he wants. He can break whatever he wants on the airplane, cause whatever alarms to go off he wants, fail whatever system, change the weather, kill the runway lights, like he can do whatever. just know life is about to get interesting when Wayne goes, I'm getting bored. You just start, grab that yoke, get nice and tight, start scanning your instruments because you just don't know what's gonna happen next. Get back to the throttle on number one. Let's go fire the bottle. Put the bottle up, rotate left to right, blow out the bottle. All right, bottle just start number one. All right, fire's out. Fire appears to be out. Where else do you get to not only fly a 737, but fly a 737 that suddenly catches on fire? You know, you, you get a warning before you're about to smack the 737 into the ground in the simulator, and it goes something like Captain Wayne screaming, flare, 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 and yeah, well. Too low, flat, terrain, flare, terrain, flare, terrain, flare. terrain, sink rate, sink V1. But it was quite a firm arrival, but I figured, hey, we got one engine, you know, you gotta give me a little credit there. Uh, come around the patch the second time, um, try to land in thunderstorms, and uh, I, I don't think he um, managed to mangle me too much on the, uh, the the second land in, and that was a nice greaser right on into the runway. Here, down a lot, three green, lower end, upper panels. They call my altitudes. 150. 100. Start your flare. Hold it right there. 50. Don't pull back anymore. 40. Don't pull back anymore. 30. Power it back. Power 20. Back. Keep that attitude right there. Hold on, you're gonna like it. Good job, man. Reverses. All six The second time we went through, the major problem that we had to fight was a complete hydraulic failure. And as we're in the class, we're really learning the systems and that the 737 has an A side and a B side system and it has a backup rudder a hydraulic pump. When the hydraulics fail, both sides, left and right, you have no hydraulics in your flight controls. And it is like flying a lumbering brick at that point. You turn the wheel and it just sits there. You hear the 737 laughing at you. So, oh, you really want me to go right? I'll get there eventually. So you really had to learn how to fly. As soon as it starts moving to the right, then you need to start putting the correction in the left end because it's going to drift. It was took a little while to get, and it was a workout. I mean, you're trying to get the trim to balance everything out. It just, nothing you're going to do in that mode was going to work. Thankfully, he didn't make me land in that uh, condition uh, to get your 737 type rate, and you actually have to be proficient at landing in manual reversion with no hydraulics. Well, I'm on manual reversion now. Cycling it up for manual reversion. You have no hydraulics. So how's that flying, Jeff? Like a brick. Like a brick. Somehow we got it lined up. <laughs> So now, just for fun, give the airplane your first officer for a second. Take the airplane? My airplane? Good luck. <laughs> Keep your altitude. Keep your altitude. How's that flying? Wings <laughs> level. Yeah, that's... Woo. <laughs> it's a workout. It is a workout. 
when you get out of the simulator, you end up with one full hour in your logbook. Half hour is PIC, half hour is SIC, second in command, because you're getting 30 minutes on each side. You also get a couple of approaches in your logbook. Now, because you're not type rated in the 737, they don't count towards currency, but it is true logbook time that you get. Thanks, sir. All right, next in line, Captain Sullivan. Okay, good deal. All right, sir. Thank you. All right. So all in all, my personal experience with the ATOP jet course, and I didn't even have a hand in the course this time. I was just the camera guy. But sitting back and observing the whole thing and how Wayne conducted it, how the students handled it, you know, questions and answers during ground school. First of all, it was really interesting to just listen to the different types of questions that came about from all the different experience levels. And it's, it's just so cool. It gives you a bit of an insight to how different people are thinking and how different people see this situation from their particular point of view. And of course, at the end of the course, Wayne will sit down and sign your logbook and you get 737 sim time. The fact that you can get that out of a course this accessible to the general public and general aviation and aviation as a whole, that's just, that's phenomenal. What Wayne is doing is really awesome, particularly because Wayne is letting you kind of test out this career first and just see if you're even gonna like the beginning stages. And if there's anybody that should be doing this kind of course and doing this kind of work as far as feeding somebody into a career, it should be Wayne. Wayne is incredibly passionate about it. You can just tell when you talk to him about aviation, he's very passionate about it. And he's very encouraging when it comes to tackling a big task like oh, taking on a 737, hand, hand flying it on the controls. Wayne is really great at what he does. And I think this course, it's such an accessible way to get your foot in the door to just see what airline training is like. And if you're truly thinking of airlines as a career, sign up for this ATOP jet course. Even if you're pretty sure airlines aren't gonna be on your career path, whether you don't want to, you think it's inaccessible, just go try this. It's accessible for what you get, it's very affordable, and it's just one weekend. I was personally very impressed with the entire process that Wayne put on from start to finish. I'm certainly gonna be coming back to take his course as a student, not as a cameraman, but as a student, and really see what taking the course is like myself hands on. I think the bottom line here and the big takeaway from this whole experience is that you should leave no path untaken. Whether becoming an airline pilot is a career that you've heavily considered and you really want it, or if it's a career that you never thought would be for you, I encourage you to take this course either way. The greatest thing about this course is the instructor that conducts the entire thing is incredibly passionate about the process. Wayne has been an aviator for a long time, he's got a lot of experience under his belt, and he's a very inspirational person to learn from. Like I said before, I was merely Ken's cameraman that came along with him to film this course for Wayne and film this course for Ken, but I was blown away by how authentic this training experience is and just how realistic it is. And I'm not just talking about the simulator, I'm talking about our instructor, I'm talking about the curriculum he covers and the way he presents the information. It's such a practical way to see just what airline training would be like, whether you're considering it as a career or not. I strongly encourage you to sign up and take the ATOP course with Wayne. I was just a cameraman this time but I'm certainly going to sign up for the next ATOP course that Wayne holds. And I want to get some hands-on experience as one of Wayne's students to see what his training program is all about. As always, thanks for watching Aviation 101. Y'all stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, and stay proficient. We'll catch you on the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be on the ground in Dallas, Fort Worth, momentarily. Uh, please ensure seatbelts fastened, tray tables in the right position, flight attendants, careful landing. Excellent.